Hi guys, my name is Ashley. I've been doing a channel called Think to Rethink about lining your thinking pattern up with God's word, the truth, and being set free from the wrong mindset, from um, the wrong understanding of who God is, from anything that you've been conformed to other than God, from this world that you've been conformed to. Uh, so I just wanted to get on and I wanted to do a little lesson uh, that I was thinking about uh, lately. What who I've encountered and stuff, different people, different walks that they've been going through in different seasons. And we kind of went over like things that are going to like fuel either faith or fear. Faith is what we should live by. And then fear is the opposite of faith because fear scares your faith away. Stops you from taking the step of faith. Holding you back, hindering you. Um, so which are you feeding? Are you fueling your faith in what God says? Or are you fueling fear by what you can see? Faith is more the unseen. Faith is unseen. And then fear comes from the scene that you're around, that you're exposing yourself to. So faith. So in Hebrews 11, 1, there's some scriptures I would like to read. Uh, now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. So confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we do not see. So faith is unseen. What are you, what do you hope for? What's your confidence in? Um, do you hope for another day? So if you hope for another day, everything that you need is in this, this God's word. He speaks about everything. He's the creator of all. He put it all in here. So if you're hoping for another day, we'll say you're hoping for another day. Um, you're not going to want to watch the news so much. It's okay to watch the news. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to know what's going on in the world. But if you're spending more time in the news, uh, social media, gossiping with one another, whatever that may be, and not spending time in God's word, then you're clouding your faith by the fear that the world is putting in you. That you're, f you're fueling your fear because of the scene. Because of what's going on today is like really, really bad things that are going on in the world. It's getting worse and worse because the end times, the Bible tells us that it's going to be evil days. And they're here. Uh, it's arising more and more. And when you're feeding yourself the fear from the newscasts and stuff, I'm not sure who I'm talking to, but I know that this is... This is related to some someone that's going through something right now. And they keep feeding their uh, their time. They're, they're using their time to watch the news, to fuel their fear. They're not even understanding it. it they're fueling their th the fear in them. They're getting fearful. And then that's overtaking the faith that they could be walking by. Uh, the unseen is what matters. The Bible tells us, God says, all good things come from above. We do know that. There's bad things in this world that is very corruptive and trying to take us away from who God is, uh, who he says we are, and what he says we should be doing, and what we were created for by our creator, God. And when you're feeding your fear and stuff, you're not able to walk by faith. And it's impossible to please God without faith. In Hebrews eleven sixteen says it's impossible to please God without faith because you have to believe that He exists. You do not see Him. Um, walk by faith, not by sight. In Second Corinthians five seven, we walk by faith, not by sight. Uh, so are you hopeful for another day, or is your hope for tomorrow? Uh, Luke. 178 through 79. Let's read that. And I am reading from the NIV version. Because of the tender mercy of our God, by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven, to shine on those who are in darkness and in the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the path of peace. So God gives us an, another day. He has the ability. He's the one that says who has another day and who doesn't have another day. And where the light shines into the darkness, 
um, who he get he gives light to the understanding to to give it to the people that are walking in the lack of knowledge lack of understanding in dark he he's the one that exposes who should have it and who who shouldn't like he he's the one that makes it happen he's sovereign he's in control of all so it's him that you should be hoping for for another day not by watching the news or, or anything like that like no no one in this world can save you only jesus can save you only god gives us chooses who has another day and who doesn't and who has understanding and who doesn't um so salvation we're saved by grace through faith we are we we are saved by grace by god's grace through faith in jesus christ what jesus did on the cross for our sins so romans 8 24 through 25 let's read romans Eight twenty four through twenty five. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. So hope is unseen. And through the faith, by God's grace, we are saved. So our hope is in Jesus, what he did on the cross for our sins. So that we have hope and we're able to have faith. To believe in what he sa says in his word. It's true. And he did exactly everything that he did in his word that he said he would do. But we'll get to that, uh, that God keeps his promises too. I have that written down for us. Bible scripture. So 1 Peter 1 3. We're still talking about what we hope for, what we need to hope in. So we need to hope in God. We need to hope in Jesus. Hebrews. Oh, 1 Peter. Sorry. 1 Peter 1 3. I haven't read from scriptures on a video for a while, so bear with me. First Peter one three. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. A new hope. And it's all mercy from God. Of why we're able to have that hope. So hope that your needs will be provided for. Are you is your hope and your needs being provided for? Um, not necessarily hoping for God to provide your needs, but are you just hoping that you get what you need to survive? You need to put that hope in God for those needs because He's the provider of all. And that's in Philippians 4:19. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. It's all through Christ. He'll meet all your needs through Christ. So do not fear. So here's some, here's some other characteristics of God. How he wants you to keep on hoping in him. And not fueling your fear on watching tv social media gossiping with other people about what's going on in the world that's on the big scale of things is the is the world if if you look at it that way it's very overwhelming and stuff because we're only one little person and that is a big scale to be looking on so what's important is for you to focus on your walk with god where you're at and be feeding yourself with the word of god or what he says who he is then you'll find out who you are 
and you'll find out what you're created for, your purpose. You'll, f you'll find out so much. And you'll be so focused on what he says and you'll know that he's the provider. He's uh, the protector. He's the one that is a present help in trouble. He's the one that's going to deliver you. He's sovereign and control of all. He created you on purpose for a purpose. Uh, he gives peace. He protects you. He fights for you. Vengeance are his. Like, so much. You have to focus on him. You have to focus on his work. That's how you feed your, that's how you feed your faith. So seek God. Read God's word. Uh, pray. So do not feed your do fear by feeding yourself the worldly, uh, the worldly views on everything. And not feeding your fear if you look at it from the world's perspective. But if you look at it from God's perspective, you're feeding your faith. So it's very important to seek God. Psalms 34, 4 through 5. Now this is just particularly maybe like one scripture on this, on seeking God. But there's tons of other scripture. So don't think there's just one particular scripture for everything because there's not. There's so many scriptures. Um, For one thing, like do not fear. Over 365 times in the Bible I've heard. One for each day of the year. Um, This is seeking God. There's tons of other verses that go with it. Because God wants to uh, tell us over and over and over and over again. To let us know that he is truthful to his word. That his word is true. It, it just connects with so many different verses throughout the whole Bible. On that one particular thing. Like this one is see God. This is just one of very, of very many. So 34... Uh, Psalms 34, 4 through 5. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. I sought the Lord. I seek the Lord. And he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. So he's the one that takes the fear away. The more you find him, the less fear you have because he's a God of peace and he's not the author of confusion. Trust God. So Psalms, let's switch over. Let's flip over to 56. Psalms 56, 3 through 4. When I am afraid, I put my trust in you, in God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, and I'm not afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? You put your you put your trust in God. Trust God. God helps in trouble. I'm trying not to make a long video. Um, because I know you guys are very busy and stuff, and I wanna uh respect your time and value it. Uh God helps in trouble. This is just a great reminder. So God helps in trouble. So Psalms 46, 1 through 3. 46. God is our refuge and strength and every last and ever present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though its waters war and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. See, God's a present, ever present help in trouble. He's always there. Even though sometimes I know it feels like he's not there when you're going through difficulties and stuff. Please, please remember he is there. There's another scripture that says he's close to the brokenhearted. Isaiah 41, 13. Let's switch over to, flip over to Isaiah. 41, 13. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, Do not fear, I will help you. 
Amen. God gives us peace, protects you, and fights for you. So I'm going to read a few of these. So John 14, 27. I hope this is helping you, ladies and gentlemen. 1427. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. See, the things that you're seeking, you shouldn't be seeking from the world because they're not going to give you the truth. They're not going to give you peace. Um, it's just going to be an imitation. It's going to be a counterfeit. It's going to be the wrong piece. It's going to be temporarily. But God, Jesus, it, he's the the way, the, the truth, and the life. And that's the way. So that's why you should seek him and his word. And put your hope and have faith in what he says. By the hope you have, it produces that faith for you to walk in faith. Be obedient to the Lord by walking in faith. And that's what pleases him is steps of faith. All right. So Psalm 9. Sorry, kind of back and forth, back and forth. But this is good. It's coming through the whole Bible. All right. So we got Psalms 9, 4 through 5. And then I also have another song that I would like to read you while I'm in this book of the Bible. And I will make sure that I put all of these down in the description box below so you can look it up. Please, I encourage everyone to get into the Word of God and just look it up and meditate on it day and night, the Lord says. Nine, four through five. For you have upheld my right in my cause, setting enthroned as the righteous judge. You have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. See, the Lord, he's the one that fights for us. He's the ultimate just judge of all. Psalms 115, 11. Let's go there. 115.11 You who fear him, trust in the Lord. He is their help and shield. He's our help and shield. Amen. Isaiah 41.10 So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Amen. And there's also Deuteronomy 3.22. Uh, I won't read that for the sake of time. But I just want to uh, kind of just summarize and just let you guys know that God keeps his word. God is not a liar like a man. He's not like a man, so he's no liar. In Numbers 23, 19. And God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. And God is trustworthy in all his promises. Psalms 145, 13. I really want to read that because it says a little more than just him being trustworthy. And I want it to resonate and just... I just want you to just receive what the Lord has for you during this video. And I'm praying for those who need salvation in Christ and also uh, just deliverance and healing and transformation in the mind. Whatever season you may be in, we all go through different seasons and we're all on different uh, areas in our walk with the Lord. But if if you haven't chose to walk with the Lord yet, you won't be disappointed if you do. He gives life. He, No other person has salvation but through Christ. 
that's how you get to God, Father God, is through Jesus Christ, the Son. So, Psalm 145.13 says, Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures through all generations. The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. Amen. He's trustworthy. He's faithful. His kingdom endures forever. It's all everlasting. His word endures forever. And Isaiah says too that if I if I say it right, let's see. It used to be one of my favorite scriptures, but I haven't said it in a while. It's in the book of Isaiah. And it says the flowers, the grass will wither, the flowers will fade, but the word of the Lord endures forever. So it's everlasting. All right, so I hope this blessed someone. Remember, what are you feeding? Are you feeding your faith by seeking God, by reading his word, by spending time with him in prayer? Or are you meditating on the wrong thing? Are you feeding your fear by meditating on the news, gossip, uh, whatever that may be, however you may be getting it, social media, doing things outside of what God says. If you seek in in God and you'll find the peace that surpasses all understanding and you'll find eternal life in Jesus by Jesus Christ yes the salvation it will refresh your soul I just wanted to get on and I just wanted to make a little video be blessed everyone until next time remember think about what you're thinking about like when you have a thought think to rethink you don't want to just let any thought in you want to make sure that you're cutting off the wrong thoughts that go against what God says in his word. And you want to feed the right thoughts. To uh, feed your faith. We walk by faith not by sight. I love you all. Until next time. Be blessed. Bye.